What's up guys, Brett Medlock here. Wanted to do a little off the cuff top five Vita games, my personal top five Vita games of 2016. There's been a ton of good games. There's been a ton of good games over the past three, four, five years. How old's the Vita? I can't remember. Before I jump into this list, I do want to say there's two games that weren't on the list but do uh, deserve some recognition and one of those games is axiom verge and the reason why it's not on the list is because technically it came out in 2015 but the vita version did come out this year and i did do a review on it which will be in the description and the other game is severed uh, uh, it was a playstation vita exclusive for a couple months it was developed by drinkbox studios the same guys that did guacamelee a uh, super good game but unfortunately for some reason i haven't put enough time into it to consider it on my top five but not saying that it shouldn't be on the list, I just haven't invested enough time into it. 2016 was a great year of Vita games, so I'll just jump right in. Number 5 is the most unexpected of the bunch, and it's Valkyrie Drive. I didn't think I was going to really like this game, but I got handed it for a review, and turns out it had some of my favorite gameplay of this year. Like seriously, this is an action RPG that is a must play on Vita in my opinion. Not only is the gameplay impressive, but the presentation is awesome. Throw in a weird Japanese story and you get one of my favorite Vita games of this year. And I will link my video review in the description. Number 4, Trails of Cold Steel 2. As many of you may know, Trails of Cold Steel 2 is a highly respected Japanese role playing franchise that's a spinoff of another franchise, I'm not really sure. I'm not caught up on all the Trails games or anything like that, but I jumped into this sequel without playing the first one and I really enjoyed it. I thought that the characters and story overall were awesome, they always kept me going. The turn-based gameplay was a ton of fun, and the game overall was just, it was pretty to look at, it had a real AAA quality to it, and the localization was spot on. Number three, Attack on Titan. So what's interesting about this game is I never watched the anime. I just jumped right in without any preconceived like ideas or notions about the story or anything. So I thought the world immediately was super unique and just the tone of the world overall was awesome. And uh, one thing I really liked was that the developer actually decided to put this game on Vita. Obviously, it has a bit of a uh, struggle uh, loading and, and running the game per like perfectly compared to the PS4 version. But I just think it was really awesome. Like, this is the type of game where I always just want to play on the go because it's just levels. It's not like an open world adventure game. It's just level after level. So you can easily sit down, play a level, uh, try to get a good score, and then you can close it and come back later. It's a perfect game for on the go. And I'm not going to lie, uh, some of the story in the game actually had me pretty emotional. I, like, I'm pretty sure my eyes were watering at one point because of how emotional a scene was. So I just think that's really awesome. It was really cool to get an experience like this on the Vita, and hopefully we get more in the future from Japanese developers like these. Once again, the link to my video review is in the description. Number two, Grand Kingdom. Grand Kingdom is a funny story because I actually didn't know I received the code for the game until it was too late to review it. So I decided to download it and it ended up being one of my favorite games of this year. This game's also on PS4 and I just have to throw this out there. It is one of the best looking games of this year. It is gorgeous to look at. It's an awesome, like unique, like, like illustrated art style. I can't even really explain it, but if you're looking at the video, you can see this game looks beautiful. Not only that, but this is one of the most addicting games. It's one of those games where I always feel like I need to spend more time with. You can always jump right back into it and level up your group. You go out, you scout for items, you get weapon upgrades, you build new characters. The character customization is awesome. The gameplay is something for me personally I've never experienced. It's like a, a board game where you, where you have a limited amount of moves you can make. It was just, it's super fun. I can't stress that enough. And unfortunately, I feel like this game out of this whole list is one of the most o overlooked games out of the bunch. So if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. And last but not least, Odin Sphere Lefrasir. This game had me up at night in bed until like 3 in the morning for like a month straight. I'm not even kidding you. It's such an addicting game. This is a remake of the PS2 game Odin Sphere, and they made the gameplay a lot more similar to Muramasa that was on Vita and previously on Wii, 
And it's just so fluent and so fun. And like, even if it's the same thing over and over, it's just nonstop fun. You can constantly upgrade your character. It's it's almost an endless amount of upgrades because it takes so long to get all of them. And there's like five different characters. It's a very meaty game with a bunch of content. And the story is good. All the characters have like this like interaction with one another. And you play through as different people. And you'll come across uh, previous people that you played as. It's, all, it's just a very well put together game from top to bottom. The special attacks are awesome and you get to choose like which ones you like the most and you don't have to use all of them. When I first started playing, after I beat the first story as the first character, I thought it was the end of the game because I had not played the PS2 version and little did I know the game was still four times longer and I loved every second of it. And I know I just said previously in the video that Grand Kingdom was one of the best looking games, but Odin's Fear Left for Seer seriously is one of the best looking games of this year. Vanillaware is known for making gorgeous games if you've played Muramasa or Dragon's Crown. They're just awesome games. Brilliant games. This, I feel like this developer needs more recognition. I think a lot of people overlook them because they're 2D side-scrollers, and we see a lot of that in the indie scene, but these games are definitely not something to look over. Odin Sphere Left for Seer isn't just one of my favorite Vita games of the year. It is one of my favorite games of the year. That's including PS4, Xbox One. 3DS, everything. This game rules. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll link the, the video's reviews, as I've said now three times, in the description. Uh, I'm Brett Medlock. Please subscribe if you enjoy this video or if you love the Vita. I love talking about the Vita, so if you love the Vita, be sure to hang around. I'll talk to you guys later.